Hello there, this is Mahin Ashmi with another episode of Behind the Art Scene and this is another artist talk and today the person I have, I'm really looking forward to this discussion because it's something about Me Too and as my work is also on Me Too if you have been watching the videos and previous one we did a session on art activism. So I have a person who gathered a lot of artists uh, who are working on women empowerment, Me Too and Creative Coalition and a lot of things. Uh, violence against women and there is much more so she is an art educator she has her phd and uh, she is doing a lot of work and we are going to discuss and talk to her about her work by herself uh, we have today lauren Estes from us and hi lauren how are you doing hi i'm very well thank you thank you so much for having me on your show it's such an honor Thank you so much for being here uh, at this time, considering the time difference. It's early morning right now. There, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. And you are, in, you are in Pennsylvania, right? That's correct. Okay. So thank you for taking out time and this hour. And, and I'm very intrigued about your work personally as well and the way it's working. And you are a very different kind of a person here, that but mostly I have artists talking about artworks and producing artwork, but you are the person who connected a lot of artists with your work. So you know you are this person. So you have been teaching publicly and in public and uh, private schools as well. Can you tell us more about what, you know, you are You are not an artist, right? But you are an art educator. So can you tell us the different genre of your work that as an art educator, that what you, what's your, what's your um, intent of working and in what terms uh, right now? Sure. Um, so I was actually um, an art teacher for about 13 years and I was I taught in public schools and private schools um, in the US, in Virginia, um, in Washington, D.C., in Pennsylvania, um, and also at um, now I'm at Penn State University as well. Um, so that is really my background. And then I also have some background in art history, and that's something I'm also very passionate about as well. Um, and right now I'm I'm a PhD candidate in art education at Penn State and my research that I'm working right now is is looking at violence against women around the world and how artists actually um, address violence against women through their work. So I, I thought it was really interesting, you know, to think a lot of times when we think about violence against women and all these movements, they're addressed in a very universal type of manner that we say, you know, we have rape, we have harassment that happens everywhere in the world. But there's a lot of things that occur, you know, uniquely in each situation, um, in each global situation, depending on where you're from geographically, depending on um, the layers of oppression that you experience, maybe due to your ethnicity, due to your abilities, um, due to um, a multitude of different factors that can complicate um, the way that you experience violence. And so I was really interested in seeing how those different factors influenced artists' work. And one of the things that I found that was really interesting in working globally was that a lot of those localized nuances of violence really came to the surface. So we were able to see how, um, what factors made um, these violence different around the world. And, and you know, this is a new genre because after Me Too, uh, a lot of artists work got some attention that what they're working on. And, and it was not so common that artists were working on Me Too or sexual harassment or domestic violence and trauma and all of that. So do you see, because it's been a year and there is a lot of progression, do you see a progress in this genre also since you have been working since, uh, since last couple of years on this um, topic? I would say the main difference that I've seen is that a lot of artists that were um, you know, working kind of under the radar on this kind of work now have really found purpose. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, we first connected um, in 2019. I've been working on this project yeah. since 2018. Um, and and I think a lot of people were working on um, survivors, especially were working on these things on a very individualized level where they were using it to confront their personal trauma. Um, and, and that usually when you look at the literature with art and um, violence against women, it is a lot of work on trauma. 
Um, but now with Me Too, people are looking at art against violence against women in a much broader sense. And they're saying, okay, so now that I've addressed my personal traumas, um, how can I change uh, the society? How can I use my art to influence the way that people see the world? How can I use my art to question um, the way that people look at at things that are normalized within society. And one of the really interesting trends that I've seen also is that a lot of the artists that are working against uh, violence against women in this work are very international. And what I mean by that, or transnational, is that they oftentimes they work um, internationally themselves. Um, sometimes these artists, you know, come from one country and move to another country and are become very aware of the problems not only in this new country that they've settled in but in in their own country because i think whenever you step outside of your own culture you're really able to critique where you come from um so i over half like over half the artists that i've been working with kind of have that sort sort of scenario so for example um if you are familiar with the priya shakti comic book in india it addresses um a lot of rape and stigmatism with uh, victim blaming. Um, the producer and founder of that, um, Ram Devanini, is actually a, he started out as a documentary filmmaker in New York, um, and he is um, of Indian heritage. But he did not, you know, what, what really moved him to create the comic was coming back to India and recognizing the problems within there, but it took, you know, coming back, stepping out, um, step, seeing outside of where you're from. Yeah. And, and, you know, there is a diversity of mediums as well. And then most of them are the artists are survivors themselves. So it's mostly sometimes, yes, authorities and sometimes, you know, it's. Yes, and that's true too. There, so in my, in my study, I'm working with 24 different artists and they're from 11 different countries around the world. Um, I really tried to recruit from all over the, the world and in all different continents. Um, and I think I was going to tell you there's, yes, there's 11, there's 15 different mediums that the artists okay. are working in. So it's a very wide variety and that's very unique also when you think of an art study because a lot of times um, art is very strictly categorized. Um, and that's also kind of, you know, a hierarchical thing. You know, when we think of art, there's like, craft people always think of conceptualize as something kind of lower at the bottom in this study the way that we're looking at um art is we're all putting it on the same level and that's the same as also the level of i guess what you would call um professional success of the artist yeah. too there's I, i'm working with people that are very well established and also people that are really just starting out. And the reason that I do that is because I think that, you know, no matter where artists are in terms of, you know, publicity or fame, they have equally important things to say with their work. Um, so that's a really interesting thing to, have, to see all of these different people coming together in these different places within development of their artwork from different mediums, from different places, all addressing violence against women. Yeah. And, you know, all of them are connecting at one point, you know, the so motive is the same. That's the best part about it. So mm -hmm. what was the reason of choosing this context for you that, you know, you have a research paper, you have a study and you are studying on that. So what was your reasons? What intrigued you to, you know, choose this genre? Um, so I, I first of all, when it first when I first started my study, it was really when Me Too was just in the, its peak. Um, so everyone was talking about it. Um, I have a lot of um, international connections. My daughter is actually half Pakistani. Um, so I have a deep connection to the, the community in Pakistan. Um, and I was also connected to a Facebook page that was the Soul Bitches <laughs> Facebook page, um, yes, yeah. which is Rabia Latif. And, you know, when I was connected to that Facebook page, I was able to read some of the experiences of some of the women in Pakistan and the things that they were going through. And it really made me think about, you know, how are these situations different than the women in the US? How are they the same? Um, and it, it really intrigued me 
to consider all of these cultural nuances. Um, I know in Pakistan, there's a lot of um, issues in terms of family dynamics that can contribute yeah. to violence against women. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of these things repeat in different areas of the world, but, you know, the how it happens is very different. So that really intrigued me um, and I think got me thinking about, okay, so if, so if this is the comparison with the U.S. and Pakistan, what about other countries of the world? How are women considering that? And now, you know, I think also um, the Me Too really got people talking on in a way that they have not talked before. It really opened yeah. a conversation before, prior, um, when you think about these these conversations about violence against women, they're really centered within their own individual countries. And so what I thought is like, okay, now that we have this really wonderful platform that we can all communicate with each other, that we can all find each other, why, let's see what happens when we're able to talk, when artists are able to go back and forth and pass ideas, what's working um, in terms of transformation and change um, with artists' work in one country. Um, I'm actually working with some artists that have um, worked to change government and laws as well. So our, you know, the art has been okay. just so incredibly powerful um, with some of these artists in some areas of the world as well. And and you are saying that there are a lot of um, mediums. So can you uh, tell us some of the mediums? Because we know few, but sure. you know what are the other mediums? Because there is one that there is one documentary which really was uh, connected with me. You know, because I stayed or something like that. So I've been sure. following that. Oh, yeah. Sure. So of the different mediums, um, I would say that I've worked with artists that work in tattooing, which is really fascinating. Um, and the vulnerability that that opens up um, a lot of, I've noticed that a lot of survivors use the medium of tattooing to reclaim their body after they've gone through an experience of abuse. Um, also, of course, drawing and painting, uh, sculpture. There is a Ukrainian artist, her name is Maria Kolikovska. Um, she's Crimean, Crimean, Crimean <laughs> Ukrainian, I'm sorry. And she works with these soap sculptures of, uh, using her own body as a medium and thinking about um, the uh, vulnerability of the body. Uh, I also work with an artist who uses the medium of puppetry and she actually does adult puppet shows in order for people to really connect with victims because that the puppetry really provides an anonymity to telling the story of survivors. Um, there are several artists that work with street art, and that is also really, really powerful because the street art is really open to, to different people, the muralism, um, and that's used a lot of time also within the context of memorializing victims. Uh, there have been several documentary artists um, as well, and the one I think you mentioned was the And So I Stayed, which is a documentary that was created in New York. And it is about um, basically survivors that uh, have defended themselves and are unjustly incarcerated. And, you know, I think it, it's really powerful just telling the story of these yeah. women who have um, defended themselves against their abusers and have ended up spending, you know, years in prison. And one of the things that also is really interesting is that in those type of situations, um, men all often do not receive nearly the level of um, prison time as women for, for killing a partner um, in those sort of situations. We just had, you know, uh, the irony is we are talking about Me Too and violence against uh, women and I just saw some inappropriate comment on it and then I had to hide it and block okay. it. <laughs> So somebody just, you know, proved us right that we yes. were talking about women empowerment online yes. and there is something. So before anyone could see, I just had to hide it okay. <laughs> to avoid the negativity. So this yes. happens on, you know, when you have uh, even everywhere in the world and even if you have a public presence or in social media. So, you know, girls receive all kinds of uh, um messages and responses on our pages or anything like that and the objectifying of women is very very much common 
so you know I, what do you see the outcome of this because the me too has given us a foundation and it has given us a breakthrough to do that and a lot of artists are working on this context now so and there is and i i believe there is nft also there are um some there are artists who are working with the sculptures as well and you are working on an artist map that you know can you tell us more about the map that we can find these artists and see their work as well sure and so i'm i will ask my question later yeah Sure. The question sure. After that. sure. I'm, so I'm currently developing a map which um, is divided um, at, by the themes which came out within, you know, I actually, I'll tell a little bit more background of the study. So I actually interviewed all 24 of the artists that I'm working with. Um, the interviews happened over Zoom. And through these interviews, I developed an interactive online map where you can see the artists working within their location that address violence against women. Um, there were 10 themes that came out through the study that are also very interesting. Um, and I can share those with you as well. So the themes that came out were shame and victim blaming, silence, vulnerability, family and societal expectations, uh, religion and spirituality, empowerment, protest, memorial, language and law and government and those were all things that came out within the different artists so one thing that you can see within the map as you can see the connections with different artists across different countries and different continents and how they may be addressing these themes in different ways so when you take the opportunity to navigate the map you'll be able to click on the artists find out more information about them and it will also link to the artist's website so currently, I'm de I'm actually still in the progress of developing a website that you'll have the profile of all of the artists that are involved within the study. So kind of building a coalition. Um, also, the map will be accessible on there as well. And I'm really hoping that the outcome of this, um, there's two, really two things that I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking at this as a way to connect artists, which has already really been happening in, a, in an incredible way um and also um to build educational resources and i think it can be useful within the the realm of art education um and also you know health education as well um in terms of how can we um how can we teach girls also to empower themselves i think one of the things that's really interesting in terms of art education um is before you know in an art class you'd be thinking about, okay, I'm making this drawing, I'm making this painting. Um, and and the, the only people that are really gonna see it, you know, when you're young are is yourself and your family and maybe a few friends. And now I think that one of the really incredible things is we have this platform that, you know, kids um, have access to as well. And you can really get your message out there into the world and connect with people um, and empower yourself um, so people, you know, can feel like they have, um, they're able to do their own activism. And, and do you see that, you know, what do you see the outcome of it in coming years? And do you see um, the differences in statistics according to the region? Because you have worked with different artists from different countries. So because I feel that there are less uh, artists working on this art activism from Pakistan and, um, you know, South Asian countries and you would find more in other regions. So what are the differences? Um, that's a good question. You asked me a couple of questions. I'm trying to remember what the first one okay. <laughs> was. Well, so. But I, I can answer your second question. Um, your yeah. second question in terms of patterns with, with the artists. Um, I don't know that there is necessarily a pattern, pattern in terms of medium that I see the artists using. There's, there's artists that are working very abstractly um, using all different types of mediums um all over the all over the world so i in terms of medium i don't necessarily see a pattern in terms mm -hmm. of that um in terms of content i really do see a pattern with that and the really interesting thing is that i've noticed that in terms of people being able to tell their own individualized stories that happens more in the us and within europe that people are putting themselves out there in that level of vulnerability um, I think there's two reasons for that, probably. Um, one reason would be um, 
you know, a culturally more individualistic kind of way of, of conceptualizing the world and, and looking at things that people really want to tell their story. Um, and then the other thing I think would probably be safety in terms of, am I safe to come out and say, this is exactly what happened to me. Um, one of the artists that actually works in California, her name is Claire Salvo, and she does, you know, portraits of people's faces. And they're actually, along with that is their written, you know, testimony of their abuse. Some of them are recorded. Now that would be a dangerous thing for a lot of people to do. Um, but those people that she's working with are able to do that. Um, one thing that I have noticed um, in South America is that there is a more of a collective kind of approach. And one thing that they say instead of um, when when the femicides and things like that are happen, is they would say a phrase that's that translates to you're killing us. So, you know, a femicide of one woman, one woman is is attacking all women. And so things are approached in rather than looking at individual stories, they're looked at more of what's happening to women in general. And I think that's kind of a safer way to approach things for a lot of women. Um, in countries like Iran, um, they're not able to uh, portray gender within the artwork. Um, and so that's a type of censorship in itself. And so I do see, you know, different types of works coming from areas of the world like that. Um, so that's the main trend. But I did want to add, this is a little bit off the topic, since you brought up the cyber harassment, is that there is an artist in India. Her name is Isha Yadav. And she's working on, it's called the Museum of Rape, Rape Threats and Sexism. And she's developing, I think you can still submit to it. Um, she's cre creating an archive of all of the harassment that happens online, particularly through digital messages which have exponentially increased through the pandemic. Even women that were going out to find hospital beds for loved ones were receiving messages um, to go on dates uh, with different men, which is really awful. Um, so that's just a whole nother area that's that's really grown. And, and even once I worked, uh, it's off topic, but once I curated an exhibition and there was this artist from Malaysia and mm -hmm. she was not uh, allowed to work um, on this content. So she was working on women rights with a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. So I didn't yeah. even know if it's a she or a he, you yeah. know, because and I, the name is- that, Yeah, that makes me think I actually did connect with, with one um, artist activist in, uh, in Egypt that ended up not participating in the project for, for similar reasons. You know, I think it was just too dangerous. And and that's one of the things, you know, that's interesting too. There are areas that I have had trouble um, getting artists to participate um, due to, you know, mostly government, you know, um, and just uh, levels of safety. And those areas would be um, in China. It's very, it I had a very difficult time connecting with artists also in North Africa, in Russia, um, there are, not a lot of laws to protect women against things like domestic abuse in Russia. In China, we're dealing with a lot of censorship in which like the Me Too movement itself was very, very censored and women used uh, emojis to kind of get around sending Me Too messaging. They used um, the okay. emojis of a rice bunny, like rice and mm -hmm. a bunny, which, how, which is how you pronounce Me Too in, in Chinese, okay. so based on, high, based on homonyms. Um, so yes, that's very interesting as well. That's interesting, yeah. Because in every the cultural differences and, you know, in every region that also comes in uh, and a lot of work that you can display certain kind of work or not or things like that. So mm -hmm. what do you see the outcome of it? Because it's increasing, it started very quickly and it's picking mm -hmm. up. And, you know, what I see as an artist is like it's increasing. So what do you see the outcome of it's going further that so many women artists are working in? Are, is there is a gender difference also that are only women artists are working on Me Too? Or are, do you find any male artists as well working on Me Too? So that's, that's very interesting as well. So I would say, yes, it's definitely picked up speed in terms of the project, because one thing that's really amazing is once I was able to meet some artists, uh, most of the artists that are working on doing this kind of work are connected with at least one other artist who's doing this type of work. Um, so 
that has worked in my favor as well. And I think that as, as soon as the website is launched, um, I'll be able to connect with a lot of other people as well. And we could continue to, to build um, this coalition of artists, which I hope can you know help to um, create more platforms in which artists can you know, participate and display their work. Um, that's one of the difficulties that some of the artists mentioned as well is, is finding areas to make shows, to focus on these topics. Um, in China, there was a show specifically, I think it was in 2015 that it shut down before it even started on, on violence against women. So it's, it's hard to, to have these kind of topics in a yeah. in a common space and even you know these are are things that are hard to deal with so they're not necessarily the ideal you know happy kind of topics that people want to build a show around um so i think it's really important to have these connections and, and also for the artists to see what kind of conferences are going on um things like that um and then i forget what your second question was I I was asking, what do you see the outcome of it in coming years? Where it's going? So I, I like I said, I would I would like to continue to build to build those connections with the artists, and then hopefully build a curriculum in terms of you know in schools and things like that, um, where students can learn about this type of artwork as well. Um, usually, uh, students are learning about all of the very you know the canon of of art, all those traditional artists. So I think this is a tool to really expose students to different type of, of activist work and that can help them to learn to empower themselves. And your article, Transnational Artistic Responses, Me Too and Creative Coalition. So it was published already and if somebody wants to read it, so how can we uh, approach it? Um, so that artist was, that article, sorry, was published in, in 2020 and it was published in the visual culture and gender journal and so that is easily accessible online and i think we have a link to that in the in the bio below um so you can click on that and read it anytime and that article is actually was my pilot study for my dissertation which i'm working on now which hopefully many more articles will come out of so that kind of is um you know the basis for what all of this is standing on right now. Yeah. So if anybody wants to read it, I will mention it, I'll mention the link separately in the description. Yeah. And uh, of course, it's very interesting and it's very powerful as well to bring because you are bringing a lot of powerful work together, which are speaking for themselves. Yeah, that's that's very intriguing also. And I think we need more connections and we need more platforms to you know come together and then speaking up together because like I had uh, an artist talk last time with Eva, one of the artists who have worked with your article and you know we were talking about same things but from different regions so it, that was very interesting that mm -hmm. you know you were saying the same thing and then when we had the meetings so it was same thing but you know same content but different regions and one mm -hmm. voice basically. So thank mm -hmm. you so much, Loren, for coming, and and I wish you all the best for your PhD and everything you thank are you. doing. You are doing a fabulous job, and you know we need art educators, not only artists too for the art scene. We need art educators and curators and more people who are thinkers and you know connectors as well. And uh, how can we reach uh, the artist map if we want to see? So where can we find the link? Do you have a website, or if we want to reach your work in future, how can we approach you? Um, so I encourage you to follow me on Instagram um, until the website is launched. Um, and we can also post that, I guess, in the bottom of my Instagram link and, and Facebook yeah. as well. Um, and I think until I have the website officially launched, that would be a good way to follow the, the work. Thank you so much again, and uh, mm -hmm. I wish you all the best, and take care, and Merry Christmas in advance. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much, again. Shukriya. <laughs> Oh, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so right. thank you for your time and have a nice day. I have okay. a night right now. I wish you okay. a nice day. Good thank night. Your... Good night. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, those who have not subscribed to my channel, if you like this video, do subscribe. I'm posting every week. I'm posting uh, 
about art scenes, different retrospective of Pakistani masters and Pakistani artists and what's happening in our art scene. And a lot of my colleagues from around the globe and we are doing artist talk and we are doing a lot here. I also post vlogs on mental uh, health struggles and personal growth. So hit on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell. I will see you soon. Until then, take care and much love.